Back in my day, young people rallied and stood up to authority to bring about fundamental changes in civil rights, women's rights, and environmental protection. Today, young people are rallying support for political and social change through Twitter and Facebook. These modern tools, which can substantially reach, well, it can instantaneously reach millions of people, are empowering movements on a scale the world has never seen before. Young people really get this. They are majoring in new media, and they're becoming fluent in languages like Arabic and Mandarin Chinese. Two of my kids are with me here tonight, I'm proud to say. They're pursuing, <laughs> they're pursuing media careers themselves. My son, Andrew, works for Al Jazeera Arabic here in Washington. And Caroline, his twin sister, is a media specialist at the World Wildlife Fund. <laughs> MEI gets this too. Through MEI's newly updated interactive website, which is about to launch in January, President Chamberlain and MEI will be reaching out to young audiences all around the world, even more effectively than we do today. And with the technical support of my media kids, I even get this. I've started blogging. <laughs> and this brings me to Ezra. Tonight we are honoring a young woman who played a pivotal role in organizing the January 25 demonstration which sparked the 2011 Egyptian Revolution. Leading up to Tahrir Square, Ezra was a key organizer of the April 6th Youth Movement, which started in the spring of 2008 to support workers in an industrial town who were planning to strike. I had to read this quote from the New York Times because I think it evokes probably what was a pretty prof profound mo uh, moment for you, Ezra. At least it would have been for me if I had been in your shoes. Quote, Having had success in previously organizing small events over Facebook, Ezra expected the April 6th protest would develop more or less like her earlier events where about 100 people showed up. But almost as soon as she set up the Facebook group, there were 16 members. When she refreshed the page a few minutes later, there were more than 60, and the next day more than 1,000. Ezra watched with fear and excitement as thousands of people, then tens of thousands, started joining and posting to the group, and eventually the number reached 76,000. <clears throat> Ezra was rewarded for her efforts by being promptly arrested and jailed. And over the 18 days she spent in jail, Ezra became the iconic Facebook girl who bravely became a voice against corruption and injustice. The Egyptian Democratic Academy quickly made her its media director, I don't blame them, where Ezra and other political activists continued to use social media to organize and express their opinions. Glamour Magazine, as was noted earlier, recently honored her as one of its 2011 Women of the Year Christiane Amanpour was quoted in making their selection, she, quote, she says of her, in Cairo, Tahrir Square, women and men stood shoulder to shoulder demanding freedom and their rights. Women like Ezra insist the genie cannot be put back in that bottle. And just four days ago, while Ezra was in New York City, she urged Egyptian expats to vote in the upcoming election. Her I don't think she ever rests. Her, her seminar was called Tweet Nadwa, which I understand means sweet, uh, Tweet Symposium. I hope that's an accurate translation. These peaceful protests organized by Ms. Abdel Fattah have clearly impacted not only Egypt, but have served as inspiration to other movements throughout the world seeking political and social change. MEI is truly honored to recognize you, Ezra, tonight 
for your vision and your activism, which have brought constructive change. Please join me in welcoming Ezra to the stage to receive this Middle East Institute Visionary Award. Thank you, Susie, for this great introduction. I uh, cannot believe that you follow even the last event in the last week. Uh, it's my honor to address this audience tonight, full of individuals who embody the, the values of freedom, democracy, and justice. I, do, I would like to thank the Middle East Institute and Mrs. Wendy, its president, for inviting me to receive this Distinguished a Visionary Award on behalf of Egyptian News. Thank you, Egyptian Ambassador Sameh Shukri, for coming to here to attend this event. I believe that all Egyptian people deserve this great award, not only me, especially the Egyptian youth who sacrificed their lives in the struggle for a free and democratic Egypt. This award means a lot to me. It means that Egypt and its people deserve freedom and democracy after their long years for repression and restructure of freedom and dictatorship. Yes, the Egyptian people as usual write their history. Yes, the Egyptian revolution should be taught in all international schools. And yes, most importantly, world leaders were right to speak out in support of our revolution. Egyptians have suffered from several injustice and corruption and the suppression of freedom, but finally, they revolted against all these bad values to move towards dignity, freedom, and democracy. Egypt's youth struggled for years against this bad and unjust regime, and they used all the tools within reach in their struggle, when they found that all the tools for opposing this trial were, to were totally controlled by the regime, they created their own tool using technology and the new media. They succeed in using these tools to a very great and effective extent, creating their own revolution, striking down this regime, and drawing the entire world's attention to Al Tahrir Square. Egyptian youths were arrested, beaten, tortured, and killed, all for Egypt. The Egyptian youths were the torch, full, was the torch of the Egyptian revolution. They started, they called, they struggled, and finally, all of the Egypt heard their voice, accepted their call, and joined them in the January 25th general revolution. Thank you all for honoring the youth of Egypt with this award. Thank you for recognizing the importance of their efforts, and thank you especially to all Egyptians for their efforts, which leads them deserve this brilliant award. Thank you, Egypt. <laughs> Thank you very much, Eshra and Susan. We've now come to a very special moment in tonight's program. The Middle East Institute is very proud to inaugurate the first Isam Ferris Award for Excellence. This award will be an annual event, and it will be given to an individual from the region for his or her distinguished achievements. 
The award is made possible through a generous endowment from the Ferris Family Foundation in honor of their father, Isam M. Ferris. Isam Ferris had a distinguished career, a uh, successful career as a leader in his country. He served in Lebanon as the Deputy Prime Minister and in the private sector <clears throat> as a businessman and a philanthropist. Isam Ferris is respected for his generous contributions, particularly to education, notably, notably to the American University of Beirut, but also to Tufts University. He's given generously to uh, the, the uh, charities, hospitals, and schools throughout Lebanon. We're equally proud to invite his son, Nijad Ferris, to present the award. Nijad Ferris and his lovely wife have come to us from Houston, and we are delighted to have Nijad on the Board of Governors of the Middle East Institute. Nijad. Good evening, all. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is a privilege to be here this evening in such esteemed company. My family has always sought to promote peace and understanding. It has always been my father's dream to see the Middle East at peace. We are all victims of conflict in that region. As any issue in the Middle East has global and amplified ramifications. It is our great desi desire to see an end to all of the problems that have plagued our neighborhood and help usher in a new era of peace, freedom, and justice. The Isam Paris Award for Excellence, as Ambassador Chamberlain has just described, was created to recognize individuals who have dedicated their lives to improving the Middle East, whether it be in politics, diplomacy, culture, economics, philanthropy, or any other positive impact in that part of the world. It is meant to be an acknowledgement for service for the greater good. And the ultimate goal is to inspire and encourage more of this type of service. There is not a more fitting recipient than His Excellency Lakhtar Ibrahimi, who has been a champion for peace and understanding through institution building and diplomacy. Mr. Ambassador, thank you for joining us this evening to accept this award. My father, Isam Paris, sends his warmest regards and sincerest regrets for not being here himself to present you this award. Ambassador Brahimi is a native Algerian who served his country as Minister of Foreign Affairs and also served as the Under Secretary General for the League of Arab States and the United Nations. He is rightfully credited with helping to mediate and end the 17-year civil war in Lebanon. More recently, Ambassador Brahimi chaired the 2001 Bonn Conference, which led to the creation of the first post-Taliban government in Afghanistan. He was also appointed as special representative of the United Nations Secretary General to Afghanistan and later to Iraq, where he also helped form the first government. He is a member of the elders, a group of elder statesmen and personalities formed at the initiative of President Nelson Mandela. Ambassador Brahimi was selected to receive this award because of his service to humanity. He is a man that has devoted his career, his time, his energy, in short, his very life to finding peaceful resolution to major conflicts. He is an inspiration and an example and we are honored to have him with us this evening. Please join me in welcoming His Excellency Ambassador Lakhtar Brahimi. Thank you. 